Hi, my name is Dr. Stephen Eric Finkelstein. I'm a physician shareholder at Florida Cancer Affiliates, the U.S. Oncology Network in Panama City, Florida. And I have a pleasure of presenting today on the role of androgen deprivation therapy with radiation therapy. The first part of my talk will be to talk about the definitive setting. When we think about the role of androgen deprivation and its optimal duration, when local control with radiation alone is good, we never really consider giving androgen deprivation therapy. When the risk of local failure is high, we think about giving three to six months as a radiation sensitizer. And when the risk of distant disease is high, we think about giving two to three years of treatment with androgen deprivation therapy. What we see here is a slide that shows early randomized trials showing a benefit for the addition of ADT to prostate radiation therapy, whether they were trials done by the EORTC or these two trials done by the radiation therapy oncology group or by TROG. There was a suggestion that androgen deprivation improved what we were doing with localized radiation therapy. Indeed, androgen deprivation does not improve survival in men receiving radiation therapy for low-risk disease, as I stated in the first slide. And this is data from the Radiation Therapy Oncology Group 9408 trial, which was low-risk and published in the New England Journal of Medicine, showing a very limited benefit from adding androgen deprivation plus radiation therapy. Indeed, approximately 94 out of 100 deaths resulted from other causes. However, short-term androgen deprivation improves survival in men receiving radiation therapy for intermediate risk disease. In the data from RTOG 9408 in the intermediate risk cohort, we see number needed to treat was approximately 17. Now, when we talk about androgen deprivation, when we talk about androgen deprivation in modern high-risk and intermediate risk disease, from, uh, from TROG randomized trial, there were 812 patients with a conventional dose radiation therapy, the median follow-up of six years, um, pu published in Nature Urology in 2005, six months was more effective than three months of radiation therapy. Now, as radiation oncologists, we've been using more advanced radiation therapy techniques. So, and we've been able to do what's called dose escalation, which is raise the dose. And we know when we, when we raise the dose of radiation therapy, we've had better outcomes. So does dose escalated radiation therapy allow for us to cut back or get rid of androgen deprivation therapy? In radiation therapy oncology group trial 0815, a phase three trial of dose escalation RT plus or minus ADT spearheaded by my friend and colleague, Alvaro Martinez, um, this compared 1,520 patients of which received either IMRT 79.2 gray alone or 79.2 gray plus six months with a standard for androgen deprivation with a primary endpoint of overall survival. We don't have the formal results back yet, but this will be a very seminal trial when it comes out. When we look at randomized trials on the combination of ADT and radiation therapy for intermediate risk prostate cancer patients, here we see, again, whether it be the RTOG study, Harvard study, GITUG14, or RTOG0815, again, we're giving uh, radiation therapy coupled with androgen deprivation either between four or six months, and that should be felt to be uh, what we would consider standard of care. Again, when we think of the role of androgen deprivation in high-risk disease, hormones alone are inadequate without radiation therapy. We know that three to six months is better than nothing, a la RTOG 8610, 9408, and drug. 36 months is better than nothing, a la the EORTC BOLA1 and the RTOG 8531 trial. We know that 28 months is better than four via RTOG 9202 and DART 01 slash 05. And then 36 months is better than six months with respect to EORTC, also known as the BOLA2 trial. So in summary, the current recommendations in the definitive setting 
when we talk about low risk prostate cancer via NCCN definition, the radiotherapy recommendation is either surveillance, brachytherapy or external beam, and the androgen deprivation therapy recommendation is none. When we talk about low intermediate disease, that's Gleason 3 plus 4 less than 50% uh, positive cores and a PSA less than 10, the recommendation is surveillance, brachytherapy or external beam, and the ADT recommendation is none. With respect to high intermediate disease, thus Gleason 4 plus 3 equals 7 with greater than 50% positive cores, PSA 10 to 20, the recommendation is external beam plus or minus brachytherapy with four to six months of GnRH agonist. And then high risk disease via an NCCN uh, definition, it's external beam recommendation plus or minus brachytherapy with 24 months of a GnRH agonist. This is the current summary recommendations in the definitive setting. Now, I'd like to move into the role of andro deprivation of radiation with the salvage setting. And giving these slides is a research intern, medical, science, a medical student level two, Kevin Healy, who will be giving this part of the presentation. Hi, my name is Kevin Healy. I'm a second year medical student at LeeCom in Bradenton, Florida. And I'm going to be providing an update regarding the salvage setting. I'd like to uh, inform you guys of a recent publication, GETUG AFU-16, which is a 112-month follow-up of a phase three randomized trial uh, regarding the short-term androgen deprivation therapy combined with radiotherapy as salvage treatment after radical prostatectomy for prostate cancer. This study evaluated the effect on progression-free survival of adding six months of androgen deprivation therapy consisting of the administration of gocerolin, a luteinizing hormone releasing hormone, agonist to salvage radiotherapy in men with initially undetectable concentrations of post-operative prostate-specific antigen, then increasing to between 0.2 and 2 nanograms per milliliter. Approximately 743 patients were enrolled and randomly assigned. Um, 373 of those patients were included in the primary endpoint analysis for the radiotherapy alone group, and 369 individuals were included in the primary endpoint analysis of the radiotherapy plus gocerolin group. The authors found significant improvements in both progression-free survival and metastasis-free survival in the radiotherapy plus gocerolin group versus the radiotherapy alone group, but not in overall survival. Post hoc subgroup analysis of metastasis-free survival showed no difference between treatment groups. Thus, salvage radiotherapy combined with short-term androgen suppression significantly reduced the risk of biochemical or clinical progression and death compared with salvage radiotherapy alone. The results of the GATUG AFU-16 trial confirmed the efficacy of androgen suppression plus radiotherapy as salvage treatment in patients with increasing PSA con concentration after radical prostatectomy for prostate cancer. And now I'd like to pass this presentation on to Dr. Stephen uh, Finkelstein. So... Our current summary recommendations in the salvage setting, on the basis of the results of get to 16 physicians can consider adding a six-month course of an LHRHA to salvage radiotherapy in men with no or minimal comorbidity, given the near halving of progression and the possible reduction in mortality due to prostate cancer. With that, I want to thank you for allowing us to speak here today, and we look forward to uh, seeing everyone in person soon.